Equity residential founder and chairman Sam Zell has died at 81. We want to get more with Bloomberg's Wall Street correspondent, Shanali Basic. Anyone in media loved Sam Zell. He was outspoken, he was feisty, he had interesting ideas. Do we know yet what happened? We don't. The company had put out the release saying that he had passed away at the age of 81. Uh, they have announced that a former CEO will be taking over as the firm's chairman. Remember, Sam Zell was the founder and the chairman of Equity Residential here, which of course we know uh, was one of the big reasons he was and is still known to be really a leader here when it comes to not just the real estate business, but the publicly listed real estate business, really a pioneer of an industry that became yeah. a much bigger industry of REITs. What should we remember him for, Shanali? There are a few things, aren't there? There's this idea that he was a complete giant in the world of real estate, but people remember him also as somebody who was a very uh, keen and savvy investor when it came to distress and undervalued assets, which is why, as a journalist, it was such a joy to interview him. He would tell you what values would look like, where they were going, even if it was really bad. And he was also a deal maker. Remember, 2006, no one will forget when he sold Equity Office to Blackstone and really at the time was a pretty historic deal. Uh, and then also his tour with the Tribune as well for an acquisition. He was a deal maker mm -hmm. guy. And you know, there was a generation of deal makers at that time that were much bolder than some of the ones that we see today, particularly in industries like real estate. Remember, he was in the real estate business since college. And so this was really his life's work uh, that he will be remembered for. I remember talking about Bach and Riggs with him too. Like he right. had his hands in lots of different things. Um, so you mentioned who's going to be taking over. What do we know about the hand that Sam still had in the business on a day-to-day -day basis? Listen, he was an influential figure. They had a succession plan for a while there. So this is not as much about equity residential and the future of it. I think for now uh, there had been a transition. Sam himself was 81, but he was still a figurehead. And when you have a figurehead that is larger than life, I mean, your name will always be associated with that company. He was the founder of it. Um, there are other things also that he had a lot of deep ties to. Remember, since he was born in Chicago, he had ties to places like Northwestern. He went to the University of Michigan, uh, Wharton School, remember? So he actually had uh, a lot of ties to big academic institutions as well. And it was part of his broader reach outside the investment community and some of the ways that he was um, a shepherd, a philanthropist, and a really um, you know, a big donor to a lot of these institutions. Uh, uh, when we think about him, we, he, he was always outspoken. Anytime I spoke to him, anytime I listened to him speaking, he was always incredibly outspoken. He had incredible views on most things. What do you think about the world that we live in right now, Shanali? How should we kind of think about what he, what he leaves behind him in terms of what real estate really looks like right now? That is an interesting question. I was thinking that when I heard the news immediately, and I've got to say, I've been messaging with folks who have been working with him on different deals over time, and you know, the news has been shocking to the industry, uh, of course, too. But you know, at a time like this, when people are hearkening back to, is this 2008? Is this not 2008? It's most likely not 2008, but we're worried about commercial real estate prices in the market. When people think about commercial real estate, people are forgetting this is multifamily residential as well. It's not just this concept of office buildings. So yeah, we've lost a very, very, very large voice uh, in the room here on a day, frankly, where Moody's is coming out and saying 10% drop in real estate prices is a best case scenario without a recession, really. And it could be much, much worse if we face one. Uh, we're on a razor's edge, is what Moody's has said. So uh, in this kind of time, you would get much more granularity on where you would see those prices drop very specifically across the United States and in what asset classes. Um, residential real estate in particular, do housing prices meaningfully drop?